I was 12 and my older sister and I were home alone for the weekend. I was waiting for a friend to pick me up and getting restless. There was a knock on the door. Thinking it was her, I ran to answer it without checking through the peephole. A man was standing there with a clipboard and he said he needed to check our gas meter. I was entrenched in the disappointment of my friend still not having arrived yet. So I just told him, Yeah, sure. Whatever you need to do. I didn't notice at the time, but he wasn't dressed as a city official. He had a green and purple shirt with bold stripes, kind of like the host of Blue's Clues. He came in and immediately went upstairs to where our bedrooms were and walked into the open door of my room, the typically girly girl room with pink and glitter. Thank God my sister came down the stairs at the exact same moment and said, Oh, is that Daphne's dad? Why is he going upstairs? And I complained about how Daphne wasn't here yet and was going on and on about how unreliable she was. And then my sister cut me off. Wait, wait. If Daphne isn't here, then who is that? I said, uh, he said he was here to read the gas meters. Her face turned white. She flung open the front door and dragged me out, hand clamped over my mouth protesting. She said, our gas meters are outside. Neither of us had a cell phone. It was the 60s. And obviously, we weren't going back in the house to call authorities on the landline. Then my ever so resourceful sister had a stroke of genius. A man was walking right by our house and she motioned him over. She called out loudly into the house. Oh dad, it's good you're home. A man from the city is here to read the gas meters, he's upstairs. And just like she'd hoped, this man on the street said, what are you talking about? The man in the striped shirt bolted out of that house. The man on the street asked us repeatedly if we were okay if we needed him to stay and wait in the yard with us until our parents got home. He was very sweet. We were so startled that we barely thanked him before slamming and locking the doors along with the windows. As irate as my sister was that I let someone in the house, she begged me not to call the authorities because my parents left her in charge and she worried she'd be in trouble. I didn't want to catch any heat from carelessly allowing some random guy inside. So I was on the same page. Three weeks later, a girl in our community went missing, with the same M.O. She was home alone, and the authorities found the door open and no signs of forced entry. My sister and I discussed our options, but deep down we knew we had no choice but to come clean. We told the police everything. I don't know if it ever helped, but they did tell us they had reason to believe it was the same man. They also tracked down the man who helped us on the street. It turns out we already knew him. He worked in the butcher shop. We just didn't recognize him. He was lifelong friends with our family after that. Our parents were definitely mortified. They weren't angry with us, just glad we were okay. Though they did review all the rules of caution and didn't let us leave home alone for a while. They ended up finding that girl. Apparently she'd been held for a few days, then burned alive. They never caught that man, but fear not. He appeared to be in his early 30s, in the 1960s, so any case, he has to be dead by now. I just thank God every day for my sister's resourcefulness and quick action. I've been on Reddit for two years now, and I just found this subreddit. After reading a few of the top posts, I realized what had happened this summer to me is a perfect fit here. I haven't written anything in a long time, so sorry if this isn't the most articulate post. It's messed up for a while, and I'm still not completely okay, but it's easier to cope. It was the middle of summer, and my parents had left for the weekend to go to our house in the Cape Cod. It's about a two hour drive away, so it's no big deal for them to leave me alone for a few days. My mom had made some pulled pork and pasta for me to heat up whenever I wanted. I also had some money if I wanted to order a pizza or something. Things were all good. The first night alone I stayed up until 3 in the morning playing Xbox. So I woke up really late the next day. When I checked my phone I saw that it was a little past 1. And I had made plans to play some street hockey with my friends at 3. So I threw myself out of bed and stumbled into the shower. I take really long showers, so when my parents are gone, I go mental. 
I was in there for about 45 minutes on my phone, scrolling through Reddit and Twitter, when I heard my front door open. The bathroom is directly up the stairs from the back door, and the thing is pretty loud when it opens and closes. I immediately froze, since obviously I was supposed to be home alone. I waited for about two minutes, ears trained in trying to hear anything else. Nothing. I figured it was just the wind or maybe my parents were home early. So I turned off the shower, wrapped my towel around myself, and slowly walked down the stairs to check it out. The stairs to the kitchen, where the back door is, are pretty tight and walled in. So it's essentially like walking down a tighter version of this, but replacing the rail with the wall. So I can't exactly see into the kitchen when I walk down. My house is really old, and each step on the stairs makes a super loud creak. I still took my time and tried to be as quiet as possible. I probably took 45 seconds walking down all 12 of the stairs. So when I get to the second to the last stair, right before I could see around the corner into my kitchen, I take a little breath to compose myself. In my mind, I knew it was going to be something stupid. There obviously wasn't going to be anything in the kitchen. There's no way I wouldn't have heard any other noise, and there's no reason for them to still be in the kitchen, even if there were burglars in the house or something. After sort of mentally chastising myself for being such a wuss, I sort of chuckled to myself for being so stupid, then casually walked down the last two steps and turned the corner into my kitchen. Standing about two feet away from me in the middle of my kitchen is a man staring straight at me, perfectly still, with a massive smile across his face, just staring at me. The thing I remember most vividly wasn't his face or the smile, but his arms. They weren't just at his side. He held them in the strangest, most abnormal position I've ever seen. They were where one would normally hold their arms, but he had rotated them to the point where they were almost completely reversed, as well as lifting them up and a little behind himself. I'm not sure why I remember this so much, but it's the most demonic abnormal position I've ever seen. Honest to God, I think I almost had a heart attack right there. Looking back now, I can realize how creepy this situation was, but in the moment, I just took a step towards him and punched him as hard as I could in the jaw sort of half slapping and pushing him towards the ground. The second I connected, I beelined up the stairs, dropping my towel in the kitchen with my heart beating out of control. I sprinted into my room and locked the door behind me. I quickly put a chair up against the doorknob like you see in TV. Almost without thinking, I immediately called 911, nearly in tears and told the operator what had just happened. As I sat on the floor in my room and practically in the fetal position, staring at the door, praying a cop would be here soon, I noticed the light coming from the gap between my door had just stopped. He was standing outside of my door. There's no words to describe the feeling I had. I was paralyzed with fear, watching the shadow across the bottom of my door shift in tiny ways. I stayed balled up, staring at the gap, praying the man would go away for what seemed like an hour. All the while, the 911 operator was asking, Hello, sir? Sir, are you still there? Hello? I didn't want to make a noise. Even if I wanted to move my arms to bring my phone to the mouth, I don't think I could have. Eventually, the light returned to the gap, and I heard the faintest footsteps, slowly creaking on the wooden floorboards as he walked down the hall. It was silent for a few minutes. As I just sat there curled up still, unable to even speak. I heard banging on the front door and the sound of two officers entering my house. I finally felt safe. I opened up the door and the two of them were standing there. I almost cried. Nowadays my parents don't even leave me home alone. And thank God. I check every lock on the house before going to bed and I still occasionally get nightmares. My heart starts racing whenever I see someone standing still. Even working with sketch artists and a few lineups, the police never found out whoever was in my house. And that sends shivers down my spine every time I look outside, half expecting to see him standing across the street, smiling under a lamppost. I have no idea what he wanted or who he was, but regardless, let's not ever meet again.
I was 14 at the time of this, so keep that in mind for context. I sat on my bed, in my house on my own, per usual. My parents were going to be out for the night, and we lived in a fairly peaceful area, so even the strictest parents would have to let their son watch over the house. As I was on my laptop watching videos, I hear a knock from the door. Mind you, this was 2am, and I was already paranoid from my previous experiences. There's no way I was going to answer that door. But my curiosity was definitely piqued. Since my house is two floors, there's a window right above the door in which I could pull these blinds up to a slit to see who was actually there. The porch light was on, so light wasn't too much of a problem. I had to look to see who it was. When I looked, there was... nobody. At all. Huh. I was just about to pull the blind down when I saw someone under the light at the end of the cul-de-sac, and I almost jumped backwards. This person was in a conveniently suspicious looking hoodie and tracksuit with no light showing any facial features. His arms were to his sides, and he was staring directly at me. It was weird, he didn't move at all, he just stood there, under the light. After what seemed like 10 minutes, he just turned around and walked back into the darkness of the main street. I just sighed and went back to watching videos. Perhaps he was just some weird guy who came from the train station near my house. I didn't know, but any justification was better than the alternative. Eventually around 3am, I fell asleep. I woke up around 4.40 to the sound of my dog silently growling behind me. I thought it was because he wanted to go out into the garden, so I turned around and froze in terror. The same person from the street was now in my doorway. Again, no light hit him from the front, so I could only make out a little bit of an outline of his face. I just stared into the void, which was I thought was his face, only for him to break the silence finally with advice, which seems very silly at first glance but I have definitely forever took it to heart ever since. Lock your back door. And as he did the first time, he turned around and walked towards the stairs. I was still frozen. He then left through the back door. When I finally gained my composure, I sprinted downstairs and got to the back door itself. He was now in the garden. I could only see his outline. He stayed still for a few moments only to sprint off into the woods moments later. I never found out who he was. I didn't really care to tell my parents what happened. And yet to this day, they still ask why I insist on keeping the back door locked. Honestly, I believe he was a warning. If he had been an unstable psychopath, I definitely wouldn't be here right now. Considering some of the experiences I've had since, I say locking your doors, even in peaceful areas, is great advice. So to the 2am security checker, thank you I guess. Even if your intention was bad, I still learned something from this, and from you. This happened well over 10 years ago, so I'll try my best to describe the events accurately. One of my childhood homes had a balcony that was attached to both my mother's bedroom and mine via a big double glass door on each of our rooms. Next to the balcony are two trees, one I often used to climb up and down from the balcony itself. This balcony faced out to the street. One night when I was about 13, my brother and mother weren't home, so I was in bed reading with a very dim reading light. I heard what sounded like something moving in one of our trees outside, but this doesn't worry me because possums and bats are common in our area. Now I had thin curtains on the glass doors that separated my room and the balcony. As mentioned previously, the doors faced out towards the street, where the street lamp light was always visible through those curtains. Shortly after hearing the tree rustling noises, I see a shadow slowly move past the doors, at which point I immediately turn off my reading light and freeze like a deer in headlights. Shadow is tall, so it wasn't one of the neighbor kids that I'm friends with and it definitely wasn't all of my five-foot mother. The person moved slowly, creeping as though they were trying to not be noticed. They wouldn't likely be able to see into my room, but I could see them thanks to the streetlights behind them, creating a dark silhouette. 
They moved past my doors, out of sight. I sat there unable to move or even think about what to do other than be absolutely still. That is until I heard another sound. The sound of someone trying to open the glass door on my mom's side. I didn't know if she had locked them, but I wasn't taking any chances. I moved as quickly and as silently as I could to my bedroom door and locked it. I listened for what the person was doing now. They were still jiggling the glass door handle, but it sounded like the doors weren't opening. I felt relief. This person couldn't get in, surely, and all I had to do was wait for them to realize that and then they would leave, right? Well, I heard light footsteps move back along the balcony to my set of doors until I saw that shadow stop directly in front of them. Again, I froze. He couldn't see me. He couldn't know that I could see him. I saw a shadow of a hand reach up to my door handle and my heart stopped. Had I actually locked those doors myself today? I was out there earlier, what if I forgot? The seconds leading up to him grabbing the handle felt like an eternity, but thankfully, when this person tried to open the door, it did not open. It was locked. I sighed, such a sigh of relief that I was worried he had heard it. After this, he began pacing the length of the balcony. I didn't have a mobile phone as my mom thought it was too young for it and couldn't have one yet, and the landline was at the other end of the house but I was far too scared to take my eyes off this person or even to call for help. I was silently crying, tears falling down my cheeks as I internally prayed that they would just leave. And I heard him stop moving and he said, I could just break the glass, you know. Before I could even process this, I saw car headlights turn the corner of my street and then stop at our property gate. My mom was home. The person on the balcony moved out of sight and I heard a loud thump as they jumped off of it. When my mom came inside, I was hysterical and was barely coherent in telling her what had happened. Eventually, I got the message across and she called the police. They never found or caught anyone, but a neighbor reported a truck in the street that matched the description of a truck that had been reported recently. Four attempted child abductions near my school, only a block away. Since I walked that short distance daily, the police suspected that he had followed me or seen where I live and then waited for me to be home alone. So to that creepy dude who scared the hell out of a 13 year old girl, yeah, let's not meet again. Hey everyone, thanks for listening if you stuck around at this point. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and that notification bell to be notified when future episodes come out. You can stalk me on Twitter, you can stalk me on Facebook, and you can also stalk me on Instagram. If you have a true scary story of your own, feel free to send it to my email or post it to my subreddit. All these links are below. What's going on guys? I hope you enjoyed this episode. I definitely enjoyed making it and I think I am figuring out finally kind of what I want to do is a shorter 15 to 20 minute episode like this once a week and then either I'm going to put out two episodes a week one being like this a themed episode where it's only hitting that one topic and it's shorter 15 to 20 minutes and then either the same week or the week after a week and a half later whatever I'm going to do true scary stories so you'll get because I know there's people that don't like certain themes and then there's people that usually like all the true scary stories where it can be any theme so that's what I'm going to be doing from now on is hitting both um like i said probably hopefully shooting for tw uh, two episodes a week the the first one and the second one who knows if that's going to happen obviously shit comes up shit happens so that might not exactly stay on schedule but that is the idea moving forward i also got a couple of other ideas i'm cooking up something i think not everybody's going to be stoked for but i think a lot of you will and I'll, uh, I'll be letting you guys know exactly what's going on with that here soon in the future. So look out for that and drop a comment below if you enjoyed this, if you hated it, if you want me to delete my account, if you'd like me to do another topic that you haven't heard yet. I'm trying um, to think of topics that aren't so redundant in the horn narration community, but it's hard. Um, I got another episode coming up here in the next couple of days and uh, I guess I'll just talk to you then. Cheers.